So hello and welcome, I'm Frederick Dunn and this is May the 15th. Some people wanted to know how to put a swarm into an APMA 7 frame nucleus hive. I'm going to show you that today. We're also going to show you uh, how to do a split on a recent colony that had a huge swarm to part from it. People were asking to see what's inside, so I'm going to show you that. We have sugar syrup on top of this because that's a great way if you're hiving a swarm to keep them around and to help them draw out brand new comb. What's the mix of the sugar syrup? One to one. And it's right up to the fill line there. You can put syrup or solid feed in these. And this Apame nucleus hive can be divided up. So you could actually have two three frame colonies in here. If you're trying to build queens or you just want them to grow out from a queen cell or something. But we're putting a whole swarm in here. So I'm just going to pull some frames to make some room. And then uh, we're going to put the swarm in. Guess where the swarm is? Hanging in a tree about 50 feet from this spot. Working by myself, so I'm going to leave the camera on this, and then I'm going to go and get it. I have some old better comb here, seeing better days. But remember, this is just going to be a resource hive, and so it's a good way to just cycle it in there, and it allows me to squirt some one-to-one -one sugar syrup into it. It'll feel welcome. It'll clean out the cells. It'll smell like bees. They'll use it. Look at that wire. I probably should cut that wire out and get rid of it. But again, we're just getting these guys started. And I'm hoping they'll draw out their own comb. And when you set up a nucleus like this, uh, with the swarm that you're putting in, you can pull it all apart later and do other things to it. So that's beeswax on a heavy wax foundation, plastic foundation, wooden frame. And I uh, have a medium in there, which they can draw a comb across the bottom if they want to. And they also have different levels for the seven frame that we can put them up uh, as it fills. We can add more and then they just clamp together. This is a very simple modular system. So I'm having fun with the Apame gear this year. It's very handy. It's ready to go. It's all plastic. You don't have to paint it. It's insulated. It has vents. So once again, it's May 15th. I'm saying that because this is my video diary as well. It is sunny. No chance of rain. And uh, the bees are hanging in a tree. I'm sorry you're not watching it, but you'll be able to hear them. Spraying them with sugar syrup. Then I'm going to shake them off the branch into my net. There you go. And then I'm going to bring them over here and I'm going to pour them into this hive box. Look at that paper wasp. I like those, those are the mellow kind. That's not like the yellow jackets, but this one's going to make a mistake. It's up there getting some of that sugar syrup. I guess it's my fault for putting that there. It's going to get swept up with the rush here in a second. Here come the bees. They're a little cranky. I made the right decision putting on a bee jacket today. Goats gain gloves for now. We'll see how things go. Let's we'll get the frames in there as quick as we can without smashing up a bunch of bees, hopefully. And then always remember to push your frames to the middle. So we have seven frames here. I used to just collect swarms and put them straight into an eight or 10 frame nucleus i used to put them right into the brood box and then uh, let them build it out and they did they did really well doing that so i don't feel like you have to get a nucleus hive but what i did learn is that uh, they build up faster in these smaller spaces so this is handy now that's full of syrup if i were making two colonies here which i'm not because it's a swarm we put a divider in there and then we would have free, three frames on each side and then they would each have their own feed resource. So it is a very handy system, very versatile. And you notice that they do have some vents going through the top here through the feeders and the bees have plenty of time because it's only May. They can seal those little slats up with propolis. Very easy here to put this insulated cover on. 
It is vented front and back and it has really sturdy clasps on each side. And you'll notice too there's handles. I can't say I hate it. In fact, I'm starting to like these more and more the more I use them. Okay, they're on the landing board, of course, and uh, they look pretty calm. They're fanning away. Very good sign. Look at their abdomen sticking up in the air. Look at that little segment right near the tip of their abdomen that looks light in color. That is the Nazanoff gland. And they're cycling that back into the air. For those that just might be flying by, trying to find out where they went, because after all, they didn't get here on their own accord. We dumped them into a net and carried it over here. So it's very interesting too that pheromone goes out into the air and you know what I've learned over the years is that not only will their own hive mates join up but other bees that just happen to be flying through the apiary are apt to follow that scent of a good queen and just join this colony. It's pretty random. So we got the net away. Now, I don't recommend that you use a butterfly net, for example. I like cotton cloth, just like pillowcase material, and that's because the bees don't get their feet stuck in it. Also, you can wash it. You can rinse it with clear, fresh water if you've had sugar syrup sprayed on it, which is the case today. You can see that bee on the rim right there has been soaked with sugar syrup, and it will depend on its hive mates to clean it up. You couldn't do that very well on their own. And uh, so if you buy like a bass net or something like that, get some cotton muslin cloth and uh, have somebody sew that up for you. It makes a really good swarm collection system if they're just hanging on a branch that's easy to get. This gives you a nice close up. You can see what the bees are doing. I am very confident that there's a queen inside this nucleus hive. And again, I'll just mention it, the APAME 7 frame, and you spell that A-P-I-M-A-Y-E. They seem to have a hive configuration for everything that you're doing. So you see them on the left cleaning up uh, some of the bees that are overly soaked. One of the reasons I like to squirt them down really good with sugar syrup while they're in a cluster is that it keeps them together and it keeps a lot of them from flying away right away. It adds weight to it while they're on the branch. So when you give that branch a shake and get them into your net, then uh, they come off much easier because now the cluster is heavier. And then they'll clean each other up plus they get a treat while they're doing it. So it's pretty good. Now this Apame 7 frame nucleus hive has multiple opening options. You see that there's a green one closest to us. That's the one that's open. The blue side could also be open, but it's not in this case. If it were a larger swarm, maybe I would open it, but uh, that's so that you can have independent entrances for your bees too, if you're starting two colonies. Uh, so we're just doing the one. You also have other entrances on this hive that I'm going to show you later. This gives you a really close look at the posture of a worker bee with her abdomen held arched up so she can fan that pheromone into the air and uh, attract other workers that happen to be flying by both from their colony and others just just feel like defecting from the colonies they come from uh, they seem to do a lot of drifting you can get a lot of different worker bees to join up a colony that's got a very good queen at any time now, if there were any bees that are back on the branch that didn't make it into the pillowcase there and didn't make it into this hive, if they can't find the queen, of course, they'll go back to the original hive that they came from, which leads me to what colony did this swarm emit from? I don't know. They all look the same today. There are 21 active colonies right now in this apiary, two spaces two plots and they're all acting like they did nothing so who knows but whatever colony that was uh, given that it's warm season you can bet there are other replacement queens already about to emerge from the queen cells 
And we're going to do that today too. We're going to go and check out another colony that I suspect has queen cells in it. We're going to create another nucleus colony. We're going to do a split. Because they're taking off anyway, I'm going to rob queen cells from them and some of their resources because they're overly productive. You don't have to do that, but it's just something that I'm going to demonstrate. So if you haven't seen the video that I did, Swarm of Swarms, which was just put out within the last couple of days, in fact, last Friday, um, you'll see how many bees departed the hive we're about to look at. It was impressive. So, and there goes that paper wasp. That'll teach him, her. Why did she do it? She might have been stung. When bees go to sting a wasp, they sting them right behind their wings or under their wings, right in the thorax. So here we are at high four. Now, if you saw it, and I recommend that you watch the video because it was impressive. Bees departed this hive for seven minutes, longer than that. Then, after they landed in the tree, they came back and clustered on the front of the hive again. Now, again, I'm cycling in my less than favorable frames. These are resource hives. So, what is a resource hive? I'm just going to put bees in here. I'm going to get a queen cell if I can find one. I'm going to put that in there. Put some brood in here, capped brood, so that their workforce builds up pretty quick. That's uh, drone comb on the left. And that is worker comb on the right. And that is a foundationless frame, which means the bees built this out exactly the way they wanted to do it. So what we do is when we bring a nucleus hive over and we're going to create a nuke when we do the split here, the frames that I pull out of this box will go into the hive that we pull the resources from. So you always need to bring replacement frames for the hive that you're about to steal from. As we are, we're going to be sealing queen cells, brood, resources, and uh, we'll see how that goes. We're in a prime time of year when the bees can forage, get lots of resources on their own. Although if you're starting a small split like this, creating a nucleus hive, very beneficial if you put some kind of feeder on top. And the feed would be sugar syrup. It's clear that they have plenty of pollen in the environment. And uh, apple trees are blossoming, crab apple trees are blossoming, prairie fire crabs, everything. There's lots of resources out there. So you can see even while we're working the hive, the foragers are coming back and entering the hive and doing their job. So we're gonna pull the feeder shim off the top. This top box is uh, the feeder shim. It has hive alive fondant in it from spring. We're gonna get rid of that. The white spacer there is uh, the Be Smart Designs insulated inner cover, which I have on almost all of my Langstroth style hives. And uh, we're going to close up the center hole there, which is the feeder hole, because that colony, let's be honest, needs no help. They're very productive. We're going to super this hive today, too, depending on how many bees are inside. But by the looks of this, red box here which is a medium super 10 frame there's a lot of honey all the comb is drawn out there's a great population of worker bees in there they're all in that box doing good things we're doing some very light smoking i don't want to stress them out if you continue to over smoke your bees you can get them upset so it can backfire on you smoke calms them and gets them to eat some honey and uh, prepare for a forest fire or whatever is happening around them and uh, so they tend to cluster and stay calm. If you oversmoke, they just get angsty. Now you're stressing them. Just gonna pull this off of here. Feels like it weighs about 30 pounds, so it's still got a lot of honey on it. But the good news is a lot of those frames are not capped, and that's good news because if they were capped and it was sealed wall to wall, I would under super it. But today I'm gonna be able to over super it, and I'm. Happy to see the population here. I did a quick cut there because I had to go and get my stainless steel bucket that I like to scrape off the propolis, burcomb, and I use two hive tools. Makes it very easy. Scoop it up with one and scrape it off with the other. I like to collect propolis, burcomb, stuff like that. Why waste it? 
You can use it for your swarm lures, for your swarm traps. You can melt it down later. You can make stuff with it. But what I like to do here is scrape off the backs of all the frames. And then that makes it easier when you go to put replacements or additional boxes on and things like that. The bees, of course, did that work. And uh, you never know what you're going to get into when you pull it apart. They tend to build drone comb in between the frames, between boxes. But they also use it to help uh, create corridors. There's a queen cell right there. And what was in it? A queen pupa. So we know they had a queen. It was capped already. That's at least one. So either the resident queen recently departed or she's planning to depart very soon. But we did see a swarm come out of here. So we're going to learn everything we need to know pretty much by looking at these brood box frames. And again, I skipped over the other box. It doesn't mean that there might not be some brood up there. I'm more interested in the deep frames, and that's because I'm using a five frame deep nucleus box. So I'm going to be pulling deep frames of resources to go in there. So I'm hoping I find plenty of uh, larvae and maybe some capped workers, and maybe we can get some resources that would kick them off really well. A lot of people under super or rotate boxes in spring. I don't do that. The reason I don't do that is because I have a single entrance. I don't have a top vent. I don't have an upper entrance. When you have a single entrance and it's small in the bottom, they tend to move their brood down on their own and you don't have to rotate your boxes. I also don't use queen excluders for the same reason, because I don't have upper entrances or upper venting. This is a frame holder that I just clip on the side. made by a company that went out of business called Little Mule Bee Supply, but I do think other companies might be selling those. Those are the most rugged stainless steel frame holders that I know of. So what we want to do here is we're looking for queen cells, because I want to get one. It's the best way to start another colony of bees, of course, is to put in a queen cell with a bunch of brood. And I don't pull the end frame, but I do loosen it up. And then we're going to pull the second frame. We don't want to roll a queen, although I don't believe there's a queen in here, being that they just swarmed. We still don't want to smash bees or roll bees. We have lots of drones in here. I'm going to pull this up. You could do this with nitrile gloves. I like to switch those around sometimes. We're pulling brood here. If you want to get a colony upset, pull some of their brood. So I recommend a veil or something at least. If you don't mind getting your hands stung, you probably don't need it, but I'm using camera equipment too. Don't want sticky fingers later. This is better comb. Pretty interesting. So we're looking at synthetic beeswax that the bees use just like uh, all the other comb. And look what's in here. Lots of pollen. We see a lot of drones running around on that frame. Not a big surprise there. There have been a lot of drones coming and going from this colony. You could expect up to around 20% of the population of a healthy hive uh, to be represented in drones, which are male bees. That's reproduction. This is a fantastic colony of bees, by the way, so it doesn't bother me at all to have their genetics going out into the world. Light smoke. Don't overdo it. These are one-piece acorn frames, these black ones here. They were heavy waxed. Got some dark comb, lots of pollen, and they enlarge the cells. So we've got drone cells on the left. The other cells are worker-sized. So bees can work with uh, worker cell imprints and create drone cells out of them if they decide to. Lots of pollen there, that's good news. And it's a lot of different colors. Also good news, I'm gonna leave that right in there. Keeps them calm to leave their resources in the hive if you can. So just removing one or two frames is all you need to do. For the rest of your inspection, you can just slide them over. Always pull away before lifting because if there's a regular comb, you could rub them against each other. We also don't wanna bang or slam things around. Bees don't like a lot of vibration. 
and uh, we're looking for queen cells. We don't want to be bumping and jarring those around. I'd hate to tear another one apart since we already did that once. So we've got drone brood. We've got uh, pollen on the left. Some caps. Uh, look at all that. We've got open brood here. That's interesting. But we do know that the queen just left. So she's only been gone for three days. And if they only had one queen, right? And if she left on Friday, we would not see eggs now. But we would see if she's been a good responsible queen and left us with some replacements. Open larvae, it's good to see. Worker brood here. So we've got pollen and nectar on the upper left. Lots of pollen, worker cells. We've got some capped worker brood, capped worker brood in the lower right. And this is the surprise. There's larvae here, larvae of all ages. Not just that, we've got eggs. What is going on with this hive? Now it is possible that there was more than one queen because somebody laid those eggs and we know it wasn't laying workers yet because they have to be queenless for about three weeks before a laying worker would start producing so there's a chance we've got another queen in here now there are a lot of standards and there are a lot of you know percentages associated with what bees do but you can find surprises at any time. So there's eggs, open larvae. We're letting them keep those. That's an insurance policy. And look there, there's a queen cell on this frame. I'll show it to you in a second. This is the frame that I definitely want to keep. So I'm going to put this in my nucleus hive. I got a queen and I'm also leaving them with insurance policy because they have eggs. So look at this, capped worker brood. We've got some uh, pollen here. We've got uh, I don't see any open larvae, but here's the queen cell. And the reason I like this queen cell, down in the lower part of the frame, it's a standard swarm cell, and the bees spend a lot of time on that. They shaped it, they worked it up. It's got a nice, secure glob of wax around it. It looks like the planter's peanut shells with all the dimpling. And it's already capped. All good news, all the way around. We had some attendees that were clinging to it, but they decided to move away because here we are videoing it. They're probably on that witness protection program for bees. They don't want to be on YouTube. So we have a good one. And it's nice and tight to the frame, which means that when I push these frames together, I won't risk smashing it. That's good news too. So we have what we need. I have two frames there. Since it's just a nucleus hive, I think that's going to be enough. Now that's a lot of worker brood. These are capped workers, which means they can emerge at any time. But look what else is here. Again, we have larvae. We have open larvae. We have all ages. I don't see eggs on this one. But there is some fairly young larvae. And all this capped brood means there's a workforce ready to emerge right here, which makes it a great candidate for my nucleus hive. <laughs> I'd like to have a couple thousand 
workers joining my nucleus hive. Give them a good kick off. Because remember the hive that we're taking these from? They've got lots of resources. All the pollen they have, all the workers that they have. Now I don't want to checkerboard the brood of this box. So I'm going to push all these brood frames together after I look them over, of course, and then we'll put the empty frames that I have out on the end. Yeah, they can keep these. There's drones, workers, mixed. It's a mixed bag, but I'm not seeing any more eggs. Not seeing the very young larvae that we noticed on the other frames. So I'm just going to leave this with them. They'll have comb to work up. And remember, they've already discharged thousands of workers when they swarmed. So this is still impressive strength. And notice that every one of these uh, frames are worked all the way down to the bottom. Lots of good comb. I don't see any evidence of brew disease. I don't see greasy looking cells, dark cells, chewed open brood, things like that. So we have a very healthy colony of bees here. I'm happy to be reproducing from them. Now we just push it in from the side just a little. Give us some room to work them later when we come back. Put an empty frame on the end. Remember I'm not checkerboarding and the reason I don't do that is I want them to be able to thermoregulate their brood easier. They do that with bee bodies and of course they heat it up with their thorax. It was only 30 degrees Fahrenheit last night. So even though it's nice and hot right now we still have to consider what the weather's doing to them. Get that frame holder out of the way. I'm going to scrape the stuff off at the edge. I probably should have done that while I had more space. But always just clean up edges while you have the chance. It pays off in the long run for you. The bees, of course, aren't happy because they spent a lot of time building that up. Push that down in there. And now we're good to go. I don't spend a lot of time getting down into brood boxes unless I need something from them. We are going to super the hive. They're strong. There's a lot going on there. So we're going to put this uh, super back on, which stays with the bees. So this is my configuration. The deep brood box, the medium super, summer, winter, all the same. That's what they winter with. So I know they're going to finish off uh, these frames. And uh, if you smash a bee, yeah, I mean the goal is not to chop up a bunch of bees doing this, but don't be really upset. You can spend a lot of time trying to get your bees out of the way. Every time you clear one, another one moves in its space. So if you end up with a casualty, it's not the end of the world, but you just do your best. Sliding boxes across the top, clearing them a little bit with smoke. I have a new tiny high velocity fan that I'm going to try eventually to see if I can just blow bees out of the way with it. It's supposed to take the place of an air duster. And this is the super that we're putting on. Of course, given this colony's history and the fact that we're just at the leading edge of a very consistent, very predictable nectar flow this time of year, I think uh, they're going to be filling this up pretty quick too. And if there is a queen in there, this might just do the trick. She might just continue to lay. Now, if there's not a queen, we know that we've left them with eggs. So, insulated inner cover on top of that. So we have now a deep 10 frame, a medium 10 frame that's over 80% full. 
we have now another medium 10 frame insulated inner cover no feed because this colony does not need feed and uh, the only thing we're going to provide provide some sugar syrup for will be this nucleus hive we have to put that together push the frames to the center remember they have a queen cell in there the queen has to emerge she has to fly out she has to get mated and she has to make it back but given how many drones are in the area right now, her suitors, that list, her swipe right list is going to be big. So she's going to get what she needs and come back. And uh, those are my markings from last year on top of that hive. So now we look at the landing board and look at that. It seems pretty normal. You'd never even know that they were so manipulated. I have number four is a strong colony. I do have some work to do here. If you notice the condition of that brood box, it needs to be replaced. That's easy to do. You just bring the new box over, pull that brood box off, and swap all the frames in. So the Nazanoff glands are going. You're trying to recall as many bees as they can. And uh, it's going to be business as usual here at hive number four. We had a very good winter with them. These uh, hives are not insulated. The only thing that is insulated is the B-Smart Design inner cover. And again, we don't have a top vent, no top entrances. And uh, we pack them down for winter, single deep and a medium. Unless it's a late season swarm or something like that, then they may go into winter with an even smaller box, a single deep by itself. The stainless steel screen there just reduces the entrance a little bit while still allowing them to vent through the entrance. And a high visor, medium super that's full, and a new super that's empty. So we'll see how it goes. Probably check back in on them sometime during the summer. Now here we are back at the Apame 7 frame nucleus hive. And it seems like business is pretty normal there. You would never know that they've just been hived. So it was a swarm. It's going to do okay. Their neighbors are good. Neighbors are a standard 10 frame. Again, we're showing how these are configured with a single entrance off to the side and the blue one stays closed. The dials, they have options, vented, fully open, Queen excluder or close, they're in the closed position. There are dials just like this behind the hive as well. Insulated cover all clamped down and some venting if they need it. Plus they have two full feeders on top, about a half a gallon of syrup. Now what's wrong with this? I'll tell you what, didn't have a number. Now it does, it's hive number 40. And you might be thinking, Fred, is that beehive number 40 for your bee yard? No, but it sounds more impressive when you're talking to your fellow beekeepers. Yeah, I was out working hive number 40 yesterday. And they'll think because it's a higher number and it's not number three or four that you must know more about bees because you have more hives in theory. So there you go. Business as usual. We should actually be seeing resources coming in pretty quick. Why? Because they have a mature queen. They've got some uh, frames right now. They're doing some cleanup. Look at that. When they do house cleaning, they're settling in. And uh, they'll use that better comb. Probably to start with some resources. And because of the sugar syrup, they'll be drawing out comb pretty darn fast. So I hope you enjoyed this today. Thank you for being with me. And I hope that you're on to those swarms that are happening in your yard. Hive them up. Mm -hmm.